hi everyone uh, welcome to another tutorial of mysql uh, replication uh, today we will be talking about the multi-thread slave uh, what will what happened in the previous like uh, simple master slave uh, only one sql thread uh, read the uh, relay log and reply it on the mysql database okay uh, the speed of the reply uh, reply uh, is obviously it is definitely uh, much slower uh, than the speed of the io thread writing the relay log and which co like causing the sql thread to be very busy okay because it's only a single thread and the delay from the implementation to uh, the database uh, is very large okay so obviously uh, if we introduce the multi-thread uh, okay then we can like achieve uh, a very uh, low level of lag between our master and the slave okay so uh, why do we need this uh, uh, multi-thread okay uh, what is the need of this multi-thread as i already told you that and uh, the slave uh, on the slave side the sql thread is only one okay it's only one thread uh, which is doing all the job uh, in case if you see on the master side uh, there are multiple threads uh, which are writing to the uh, mysql database okay uh, so that is why uh, on that side the writing to the database is very fast because if you see there are multiple connections or multiple sessions which are writing but uh, in case of the slave there is only one sql thread the, uh, the lonely guy who is uh, doing all the job so which is very uh, uh, tough for and which you can say which, uh, due to which uh, there, there is a lot of lag so uh, to uh, like uh, help the uh, sql thread uh, in my to help the sql thread mysql introduce uh, the multi-thread slave uh, in 5.6 so uh, and then uh, from that uh, that time you can use from 5.6 you can use the multi threads so uh, why we need the multi thread slave uh, as you can see that let's say if you have a slave uh, server which have like multiple cores then uh, there is no use of that because there is only one thread running which is trying to, which is uh, writing so the other cpus are going into waste so that is why uh, we need uh, multiple threads uh, so we can uh, make use of those uh, cpus and then obviously you have uh, if let's say you have the ssds or you have the raid one then at least you have uh, two disks on raid one then you have like you could do uh, parallel io at least two uh, parallel io uh, on the raid uh, disk so that is why uh, if you are using only one thread and then it is going like the second uh, io the parallel thing is uh, going uh, into waste and obviously you have ssds then you can like go much to too, too much fast as well and you can go to uh, multiple uh, parallelism uh, obviously uh, faster replication you will have a minimal lag and you will, uh, let's say uh, so sql thread is slow so it can you can have a faster uh, sql thread uh, working on the slave side so um, what happened is that uh, when you uh, let's say talk generally about the multi-thread slave uh, it was introduced in the 5.6 uh, what does the multi uh, multi threads means uh, well it refers to the multiple sql threads okay uh, and there is still only one io thread uh, when the io thread writes the master binary log into the relay log uh, th when you enable uh, the mts the multi thread slave then there is a multi thread slave coordinator okay there is one guy who is uh, doing all the coordination and it's telling uh, it's getting the data from the relay log and then it's deciding that if this can be executed in parallel then it will send it to all the workers okay the other worker threads and the coordinator will decide that okay guys uh, these are the things you can execute in the parallel this was a thing which was happening in the 5.6 and it was uh, only uh, possible if you uh, if you set the multi-thread type to the database okay and this was the only thing uh, which was possible so let's go next okay so what do you mean by uh, when you set the multi uh, the slave type to database when you set it to database this means that uh, two transactions of different schema can be parallelized okay what i mean that uh, let's say we have uh, employees database okay and then we have uh, let's say uh, sales database okay so uh, 
MySQL was only uh, the coordinated thread will only be on the slave side. Uh, the coordinated thread will be only able to execute uh, those queries, okay, which are separately executing on those databases separately, okay. So let's say two guys are connected to the different databases, and they are trying to uh, execute on uh, those uh, databases separately. Then it will get those. Uh, uh, SQL uh, commands or you can say the script from the relay log the coordinate thread obviously and it will tell the worker guys that okay guys um, these are the uh, commands or these are the scripts these are the SQL uh, which you can execute parallelly because uh, these both of the database are different so you go, guys can go with the parallel execution so because they are not interfering each other so that is that was the only thing uh, in 5.6 so because 5.6 was uh, nobody was uh, like the application was not designed like that so like they should have a different for different module they have a different database that was not possible so that is why it was not feasible for uh, the the industry to like evolve into this one but still many people was using this okay so whoever had the good design of the application people were using this okay but so there was some few uh, uh, many problems with the 5.6 as well because uh, the transaction order can be different on the master and the slave and due to which uh, the uh, you could not believe that if i check from the show slave status and i check the uh, uh, executed uh, master position exec master position then it doesn't mean that if i have like reached i have the it doesn't mean that the SQL thread have executed till exec master position then it doesn't mean that okay all the data has been executed it can be I cannot believe that this is synced okay there was some uh, bugs and there was some inconsistencies still there so that is why uh, I mean that there was some gaps okay so the gaps in the transaction order so there was when there is the uh, different order so we can have a gaps in the data so the gap can be uh, solved uh, with let's say we have GTID uh, then we can take care of that but still uh, if you want to remove the gaps you have then you have to let's say you want to then, then you have to stop the slave and then you have to execute this command start slave until SQL after MTS gaps so then it was only able to like uh, recover the gaps it will fill the holes and then all the data you have uh, will be in sync and then you can start uh, or do any like uh, what do you say let's say you are want to st stop and restart your database on the slave the, the slave then you have to do it in this way like stop uh, slave and then start slave until uh, sql after mts and then stop the slave again then you know that uh, you are uh, and then again start the slave so you know that your slave is consistent then obviously uh, mysql was not uh, like basically is not uh, parallel replication creates safe without gtid so you have to introduce the gtids uh, if you go with the mass binary log position then it is not safe in 5.6 okay uh, and if you want to skip any transaction um, then first you have to remove the gaps okay you have to do like uh, stop the slave then start slave until sql after mts gaps and then after that you can uh, do the sql uh, slave uh, skip counter whatever the uh, whatever the sql you want to skip so that is how it would it it used to be done so this was all about 5.6 we will not be doing the implementation of 5.6 because uh, nobody is using this 5.6 these days uh, most of the people like industry is like you're using 5.7 okay and 5.7 is the best uh, uh, like i will tell you how 5.7 is working but uh, still uh, if you want to know let me know i will upload a video on this but it is not necessary uh, because uh, there is only the S uh, only the multi-thread type if you change to database then it becomes the 5.6 if you change it to uh, like uh, let's say uh, if you change it to logical clock then it becomes a 5.7 because logical clock was introduced in the 5.7 so uh, as i told you that uh, how this is work so everything i talked here uh, let me show you here as well so if you see here uh, let's say we have multiple transactions okay so the t1 is writing to db1 and let's say it will be written to like uh, t2 will be written to db2 and t3 will be written to db3 so this is all the binary log from the relay binary log all the t1 t2 and t3 because we know the coordinator knows this is the coordinator guy okay he knows that okay from the relay log i know wh where to execute the t1 and t2 and t3 so this was the guy okay he 
is the coordinator thread it's a sql apply thread but still it work as a coordinator now for the workers guys so then it assigns the jobs to the workers and then execute it okay so worker one will execute uh, on db1 worker two will execute on db3 and w3 will be executed on db3 and db4 so uh, these two will be in a sequential okay like let's say t3 is equal to db3 and then db4 something like that and the rest will be like uh, on parallel execution so this is very simple in 5.6 there is no like much uh, rocket science is very easy here so that is how it used to work but then uh, they introduced the logical clock okay uh, i already talked about these things so uh, the database and uh, other type so then we went, uh, in 5.7 they came up with the logical clock what was logical clock that transaction data are part of the same binary log group commit on the master are applied in parallel on the slave what happened is that let's say i have multiple transaction okay and uh, they are not locking each other okay so these transactions are not waiting for each other let's say one transaction is uh, t1 is dependent on t2 and um, there are let's say t3 4 5 6 they are they are all dependent on t2 so whenever the t2 is finished the rest of the 3 3 4 and 5 will be executed in parallel because they are the 3 t3 t4 t5 is not dependent on the uh, let's say it was all of the world dependent on the t2 and t2 is already finished so the t3 4 and 5 will be executed in the parallel so let's say any transaction which are uh, like uh, working in this scenario then those all the all of those will be executed in the parallel so uh, as i said say that there is no cross database constraints and the data data does not need to be partitioned into multiple databases then uh, it can ex be executed on the uh, parallelly on the slave side so uh logical clock as i said uh what is this based on bin, uh, bin log group commit so uh, multiple data like multiple transactions are committed in a group so let's say uh, multiple transaction are coming and uh, there are no locking let's say because all of the transactions are finished and when you do the group commit so now wh whatever the transactions are completed they will be uh, going to into the binary log in a in a group okay and these are the few variable like uh, bin log group commit sync delay okay and on uh, the bin log group uh, sync not delay count uh, these are used for the tuning okay so what is the sync delay commit sync delay what you do is that the more the group commit the, like let's say the more of the uh, transaction in the group commit are here bigger you will have more and more uh, key transaction which can be executed in the parallel okay so the more there is a delay uh, between like uh, data going from the um, uh, log, log buffer uh, to the binary log um, to the yeah binary log uh, then the more you can execute uh, parallelly on the slave side and what what is this let bin uh, bin log group commit sync no log uh, no delay count this is the number of thread let's say we say that okay i want to have a, a commit sync delay on my master oh, these things are executed on the master okay remember that i've uh, been group commit sync delay and uh, then these two okay now whatever is written in the third bullet point uh, these two variable are needs to be set on the master we will set it and i will tell you in the practical uh, and this is uh, the second one which is uh, bin log group commit sync no delay count this is something let's say i want to have a uh, commit sync delay but let's say if my threads okay the active thread goes to like 30 then uh, you should do the uh, default commit okay not uh, using the uh, value which is set in the commit sync delay so that is why uh, that is uh, why we use this one and obviously how the parallelism work uh, how does it know that you need to execute it on the uh, parallel side so that is i will tell you uh, it, it is saying that parallelism interval is based on the last committed and the sequence number in the binary log i will tell you in the next slide that how what does this uh, fourth bullet mean okay um, obviously tuning need to be done uh, while you have to analyze your binary log if there is the interval is not long then you have to set this uh, two variable okay uh, bin log commit sync delay and the other thing and obviously uh, if you don't go with the logic log uh, and the commit is out of order then there will be gaps so that is why you have to set this variable on the slave side okay slave preserve commit order so you will everything will be executed in an order 
okay so that is why uh, when you set it on the order then you won't have any uh, discrepancies uh, and any uh, inconsistency on your slave side so you have to uh, you should set this uh, slave preserve or uh, commit order okay then uh, as i said uh, as I, I told you that what is the uh, group commit and uh, that is the same thing uh, written here okay so uh, as this point where i'm saying that uh, parallelism interval is based on the uh, last committed and the sequence number binary log so if you see here uh, here uh, the 6021 uh, 6021 uh, is the last committed value okay and it is like 60 is waiting for uh, like dependent on 6201 and 6024 6204 205 and 206 all these are uh, uh, waiting for the 6203 okay so and then we have uh, more uh, transaction sorry just a minute then we have like uh, 6207 as well uh, which is waiting for uh, 6205 so um, the last transaction uh, shows the advantages of the interval which what i mean by that transaction 6207 uh, can be started as soon as the transaction 6205 is complete okay so 6207 and uh, 6206 uh, we can execute both of them in the parallel okay so we know that uh, whenever the 6205 is finished and then uh, we know that and 6203 is already finished so we know that uh, 6206 and 6207 will be executed uh, what do you say parallelly so that is how the parallel uh, like the coordinator uh, thread decide that if i can go with the parallel execution or not so that said guys for this one uh, we have uh, uh, right set in MySQL 8 but I will have like to have a separate session on that one oh, sorry session I mean tutorial on that one and we will do that in a separate one because this is a, a little bit different so I don't want to get it into this one so you guys don't get confused uh, I hope so uh, you have learned a lot of things and if you have any question uh, let me know uh, you don't need to get into these internals a lot I just it, I just wanted to uh, tell you that how things are working internally but uh, I will show you in the example how things are working.